Bluetooth speakers for this topic. Brand new technology. A hundred percent brand new. I think this shit came out like last week. Okay, what are we talking about? Well, for here? this topic, we've taken a deep dive into our social media homes of uh, owners and enthusiasts to like to find out what the topic of conversation for the week is. A lot of times, business owners will ask other business owners for their uh, for advice on their escape rooms, and we're here to answer those questions. At least I have managed to procure a business owner into answering these questions. Um, this week's question comes to us from a Reddit user, um, r slash escape rooms. Uh, is the subreddit that I got this from, and the question is, Bluetooth speakers, how reliable are they in an escape room for when you want to have sound or ambiance? I think he's trying to... They're Completely gonna, unreliable. I would love to hear more about this, because I believe the setup is that he's going to be have them, they're going to be like 15 feet away from like the Game Master station. Tell us more about your experience with Bluetooth speakers. All of a sudden, your track that you're trying to overlay through your game is going to be replaced by Lady Gaga. Are you talking from experience? Yes. <laughs> that was, <laughs> see, that was... um. Someone's just going to go right on their phone. They're going to see that there's Bluetooth connections available and somebody's going to click it. Can't you, like, set up a password for, like, the Bluetooth thing or anything? Not like, for you? many of the speakers, no. I think that would be my biggest fear with the Bluetooth speakers that someone else would connect to it or just that it would the walls or it'd be too far away or be too thick um, to really like connect to whatever you're trying to convey. It might come out spotty. Well, no, I mean, Bluetooth connections are very strong. I mean, like, for example, I use a Bluetooth connect in my car and that thing will pick up all the way over here in the office. So, you know, it, it's very... Um, uh, it's very long distance. The distance of it is not really the big concern here. The It's simply the element that your speakers are going to get abducted. Um, whenever we put speakers in our games now, we are very, very careful uh, to only select a brand of speakers, which we have in all of our games now universally. Um, one, because uh, they're exceptionally high quality. And then the other is the element that they're augs in. And that's the Marshall brand. You know, actually, as a musician, I use a lot of Marshall amps for, like, guitars and mm -hmm. stuff. And I can testify that they are the uh, the best amps to use. We're not sponsored. <clears throat> no, we're I not. I happily will be. But, um, uh... <laughs> yeah, Marshall, please send us. Because we probably kill 2000 a year in your speakers. But um, we have, in Cure Z, there is two Marshall speakers. Uh, when we revamped, or I shouldn't say revamped, but when we renovated Witch Hunt, we installed a Marshall speaker. Um, there is none in Boogeyman. What kind uh, of speakers do we use in Boogeyman? The stuff we were using before we discovered Marshall. Mm, okay, um, hence why Witch Hunt didn't have a Marshall until we just renovated it. Um, and Freak Show has one, two, three, four, five, six. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. So you went... And it's crazy that you know <coughs> that uh, Cure Z has two, only two of the speakers because uh, Cure Z being, a, it's kind of a testament to how powerful these speakers are. Yeah. Because with a game that's, you know, over 3,000 square feet and we have soundtracks and clues playing out of just those two speakers, they're. It carries through the whole building. They yeah. hear it incredibly yep. clearly as far as the soundtrack yep. and stuff like that. Well, we even just saw going from, we had a Sony speaker. Um, in Witch Hunt, in the, like, the center of the game so that it would radiate sound throughout the whole thing. We took that out, and we put the Marshall in, basically in the same place. Um, um, uh... I'm on it. <coughs> the repair team is on it. It's all right, you guys can look at my face while I go ahead and get toned back on the air. This is just one of the many trials that we deal with for your entertainment. Tony, you were saying? Um, the, uh, the one speaker um, is so much better quality that just even the, um, uh, the words that you're listening for are so much better articulated because you're hearing them at proper quality now. Uh, those speakers are phenomenal. They're very loud. Um... Yeah, with Freak Show, it sounds like there's an entire performance coming from behind the stage. Um, they're really phenomenal, uh, and they're augs in. You have to actually press a completely separated button to go to Bluetooth. They have the conversion ability, but if it's not turned on, it's not accessible. And that's 
that's what you need if you're using a speaker for the escape room unless you're going to direct wire speakers which we've done that as well we which have directly fun, wired yeah. speakers for hints and you know the great thing about those i think the hints at cure z they play over the marshall speakers as well correct no no, the hints don't actually play. Because I was going to say, a testament to, like, as well as, like, how clear they are. I've never had a complaint. Because if uh, any, I, I, I know of a lot of other companies that have started to do the pre recorded hints that play over the speakers. Yeah, everybody stuff. copies us eventually. Yeah, but the problem is with the other escape rooms, when they play the hints, it sounds like this. And I think, like, you're on the train station right. in New York heading to our stuff. I've never had a complaint that any of our hints are, like, muffled or anything like that. Witch Hunt was the only one we did. And that is. That has changed now. Actually, I, I shouldn't say that. Boogeyman also suffers a little bit from that. But Witch Hunt had one centralized speaker. Boogeyman has like six speakers. So you know, you, you have sounds from the beyond coming from all different places in Boogeyman. Mm. So odds are you're always closer to a sound source in Boogeyman than you ever were in Witch Hunt. But... Um, what we end up still doing is even with those individual speakers that we use for the hints, there's an amp that all those speakers are wired into. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Because otherwise you just have no control over the quality of the sound coming out or the volume or anything else. It would just be like, this is our halt! <laughs> and it's great that we actually have that kind of quality control because uh, imagine trying to like replay the same hint over and over again and they're just like i don't know what you're saying we still hear that at the end of the day it's it's funny we go into these games and we test out like every square foot we literally will walk play it again play it again play it again we do a constant you know thing when we're setting up the sound of you know, every three steps, someone upstairs plays the hint again. And we're making sure that we can hear everything properly everywhere. So when a group comes in and they're like, we can't hear it in that room, that's because you're all screaming and yelling. You know? Um, yeah. And sometimes that's an element of the story. Like, Witch Hunt has that problem. All the hints are from the ghost of the dead servant girl. Boogeyman has that problem. It's all the, I don't want to say spirits of the children, because they're not dead yet. But yeah. it's like them communicating from whatever paranormal the boogeyman's beyond. dimension. Yes. Yeah. So, as a result, people hear it and they get scared and they start screaming over it. So they don't exactly hear what's being said. Yeah. yeah. So like that's not our fault. <laughs> Calm down a little bit. Why are you scared? Bring it down a notch. <laughs> but to answer your question, Reddit user whose name I don't have on me, Bluetooth speakers are not the way to go. I mean, if no. you want to run the risk. Run no, don't do it. <laughs> but don't uh, do it. get yourself some plug-in speakers and ensure that your hints will be heard clearly because nothing is worse than... It's it's a little unfortunate because a good speaker, like a Marshall, yep. is double the price. But Instead of spending you know, 70 bucks, you're going to spend 150 to 200 You're probably going to spend 200 But to be fair, you are paying for that quality. Per speaker. Yeah. But we've now had these Marshall speakers running for a couple years... And their audio quality hasn't lacked or dipped or anything. We even use them when we go off-site. We have one Marshall speaker we do, yeah. that we Bluetooth our microphone into, and the whole entire room is blown out by that speaker. Same thing with the Raven Guild. All it took was yeah. one Marshall speaker, yep. and the entirety of the, uh, the Raven Room was filled with the soundtrack, which, again, shout-out to Mike Lorenzo. That soundtrack is still fire. I listen to it sometimes. My For what, Raven Guild? Yeah. That wasn't Mike. That was our composer. Oh, that was our composer? Sorry, Mike, I gave you, uh, wrong, wrongfully gave you props. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. That uh, Raven Guild is, like Freak Show, a 100% original score. Ah. Um, and that's what we're doing going forward. Everything is a 100% original piece of music created and designed specifically between myself and our composer team. Uh, we have about three people now at this point that we collaborate with. Uh, to create these original music pieces. Well, shout out to those composers because that intro soundtrack for Raven Guild still slaps. And yep. by the way, guys, if you're enjoying this live stream so far, make sure you give us a like. We really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and also make sure you hit that bell. That way you know when we're going. And we hope you'll join us next time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't below. Like, comment, subscribe.